welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You've got your boys here, Bert, the Hurt Locker, and Lanny, your favorite, best dividend investing channel here on YouTube. Man, let's get to at least 19,000 subscribers. This is brutal, guys. Help me help you. Help us help you. And today's video is all about what the heck is going on in the consumer stock arena, the consumer stock industry, guys. A lot of legs are being taken out here. A lot of stock prices are way down. Yeah, it's 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 been an interesting 2024. That's all I'm going to say. And we can't wait because these are four excellent stocks, Lanny. I love these companies. And for dividend investors that are looking for long-term buy and hold stocks, you're not going to find a better list of four companies right here. So we are pumped up to go through them and look at what's going on in this sector. Let's peel back the layers. Let's see what's going on, guys. But make sure you smash that subscribe button. Give us a nice thumbs up here on this video. Mm -hmm. It seems like if you're not a tech stock, you ain't hanging in 2024 right now. It seems like it seems like consumers just want to gobble up what's going on with AI and tech right now. Thanks to NVIDIA, Google, Meta, Apple. You know, yeah, Qualcomm is one Qualcomm. of them. Too. Yeah. You know, it's nuts. This is a complete sidebar here. I'm starting to get a little agitated with how clunky companies are with integrating this generative AI into everything. It's like, sometimes I just want to be able to search for something myself and I don't want to be prompted. I don't want to have to deal with the chats. I don't want to deal with the questions. Like I went to look for something yeah. on Instagram and it, it took me like a minute to figure out how to just search for something I wanted. It was really annoying to me. Yeah, you know, they're trying to trying to see what's gonna work, right? With AI probably trying to see what is going to stick. Yeah. Um, well, but what what's these... going to stick for dividend investors out there? <laughs> yeah, and what I was gonna say is what these companies have found is boring sticks. Boring might not stick every year, but when you take a step back and look at your portfolio over a 30 year period. These boring, consistent dividend growth stocks have found a way to continue growing your dividend and your income stream. And that's what we know works for these companies. Exactly. And guys, all four of these stocks, we're going to talk about four stocks. And let us know too, before we dive in, have you been buying consumer goods stocks? Um, you know, you know, all of these names that we're about to talk about and you know, most of these names are down by double digits, whether this year in 2024 or going back to the last 52 weeks. Um, all of them are yielding above their five-year dividend yield on average. All have relatively the same PE ratio. So we're going to quickly go through the DD stock metrics on all of them. But guys, is this the industry to buy right now? That's the mm -hmm. debate for dividend investors. I know Bert's been gobbling up maybe some some of these stocks. I've been buying a couple of these stocks as well. Um but is there is this really because consumers don't have money to spend? Is it because consumers are complaining about skyrocketing prices? Is it because of the old shrinkflation? Yeah. And the question is, how are these companies going to react? Because we can already see how a few of them are reacting. And that's what's making this very interesting. Oh, the food wars and price wars are in full effect right now, guys. But you know, four of the stocks here we're going to talk about is Pepsi, PEP, Starbucks, SBUX, McDonald's, MCD, the Golden Arches, and Hormel, ticker symbol HRL. We're actually are featuring three dividend aristocrats on here um, today on this list. There's royalty right here. From this list, I own Pepsi, Starbucks, and McDonald's. I do not own Hormel. I know. Oh, baby. Lanny's got all four of the companies that are featured here. We freaking love it. So let's look at the metrics here. We're going to start with the price to earnings ratio. And because you guys love it, oh, wait, before we dive in, guys, like the video, subscribe to that gosh dang channel. Let's go. Um, but Pepsi, trading at 172.90. You could have caught them below 170 late last week. Um, expected earnings are 817. There's a PE ratio right now of 21x for Pepsi. Not Star too bad. No. Yeah. No, for Pepsi standards, that's not bad at all. That's great for Pepsi's historical PE ratio. Starbucks is at 80.22. Ford earnings are 360. That's a PE ratio of 22.28. Not, not too bad either. Obviously, you could have caught Starbucks down in the lower to mid-70s after that 
freak out from the investing community. Congrats to all the Starbucks shareholders that have been that was gobbling up shares at those prices for now at least. So McDonald's, they actually are down thirteen percent this year. Obviously, they've been in the news quite a bit because the price of a Big Mac is like a thousand dollars supposedly right now. <laughs> a little bit of an exaggeration, but. Let us know if you guys have been still buying Big Macs out there. Let us know in those comments. I mean, it's but... not that big of an exaggeration, sadly. Uh, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, they are trading at 258.89 with the 12 point due projected EPS. So a 20, similar to Pepsi and kind of similar to Starbucks, a 21 PE ratio. Yeah, and Hormel is at 30.98 with an EPS of 159. That gives you a PE ratio of under 20 at 1948. Hmm. So the lowest out of them all, and you got to get that pepperoni, that Hormel chili, guys. Let's get it going. Oh, all right, let's move into that let's, second. Oh, let's see about the safety, right, Bert? Well, and keep in mind the S and P five hundred PE is about twenty seven and a half x. So obviously AI is pushing that PE ratio high. So these stocks, relative to each other, are kind of at the same value, but below the overall market. Mm -hmm. payout ratio the safety in the dividend looking for food this is interesting pepsi pays an annual you know broken out over quarters but in the four 12 months five dollars 42 cents 66.34 percent mm. on the payout ratio for pep mm. mm. starbucks is annual dividends 228 that's a payout ratio of 63 percent hmm mcdonald's 668 with a 54.75% payout ratio. So getting lower, getting yeah. lower. Get, well, Hormel a course, cor course correct and said, we're going in the other direction here. We're going up. Their, oh annual, dividend, their annual dividend is $1.13 per share. That gives you a payout ratio of 71%. So the highest of this group. Wow. Yep. That's pretty high for Hormel. Dividend growth, guys. Let's get into it. Pepsi. Five-year growth rate, 6.43% for 52 straight years. They are a dividend king. Got to love that growth rate. Solid. Yeah. Um, Starbucks, 9.25% five-year growth rate. Increase that dividend for 13 plus years. Although I will say, I have to be honest, I don't think they're going to be hitting 9% dividend growth for a little bit until they fix things. Probably not. McDonald's, though, on the other hand, five-year growth rate, 7.31%, 48 plus years of doing the damn thing. Almost a dividend king in Hormel. Already is a dividend king. They announced for 57 consecutive years, and their five-year dividend growth rate is 7%. Let's swing it through the dividend yield, guys. Pepsi, 3.13%. Starbucks, 2.84%. McDonald's, 2.58%, so lower than the other two so far. And Hormel's, 3.65% yield. Hmm, the highest of the group. Uh, highest. Um, yeah. The best combo out there. Hmm. But we will say Starbucks probably can't grow it as fast. Hormel probably can't grow it as fast. But hmm, McDonald's yeah. might have the best combo right now with growth and yield. Yeah, I would very much agree with that. And I think they have the best prospects going forward, too. Un unless, they I'll throw a caveat in there, Lanny. Um, McDonald's biggest risk is that the fruit, the price wars, the food wars, now start taking a huge chunk out of that, um, that margin and earnings so that their EPS creeps up to in line with these companies. And they can't increase that dividend as high, at as high of a rate going forward. Because I think what you've seen... The consumers are finally fighting back a little bit, especially in the fast food area. Oh, yeah. Wendy's, Burger King, Subway, McDonald's, they're all fighting right now. Um, you know, year to date and this year, Pepsi's kind of flat this year, but they're down 6% from last year. Yeah, Starbucks, as we all know, it's getting crushed. They're down 14% year to date, down 19% over the last 52 McDonald's, as we said, down almost 13% this year, down over 10% since last year. Yeah, and Hormel down 5.55% year-to-date, down 24% over the last 52 weeks. 
Formel Chili is getting crushed, guys. Now, you get some pretty good margin on all of them. You get about 39 basis points above the five-year average for Pepsi. What about for Starbucks? Um, they're, this is solid margin. Their five-year average yields 2.19%. So they're picking up 65 basis points over the, the, um, historical one for them. You get 29 basis points on McDonald's yield over their five-year average. So 29. So they fall in third place right now. Or Mel. Or Mel. Their five-year average yields, uh, 2.45%. So they're 1.2% over their five-year average yield. So there we have it. These are four well-known, recognized consumer dividend growth stocks. All have been growing dividends for a decade or decades here, guys. You know, personally, if you didn't catch Monday's episode, you know, I really liked Pepsi. Who knows what the price is right now? Because we're filming this here on Sunday, June 2nd. But, you know, I like them under 170. McDonald's, man, give me it at 250. And I'm there, I think. Um that's kind of my orders between McDonald's and Pepsi are like my two favorites right now out of this four list. But um, it's only because I've been buying a lot more of Starbucks this year. Yeah, I would agree. It's same. I bought a lot of Starbucks, so I might nibble here or there. I just think Hormel is always going to interest me. It's the one I don't own. Um, but coming off our last video on Tuesday, it's absolutely one I should be considering when I get the cash from West Rock. I think Hormel creates a very interesting opportunity for me lanny especially if i pursued that in that video i talked about what am i going to do at the 4300 one of my options was cash and cash secured puts on companies that i would love to own i would have enough to do a cash secured put on a company like formel if the interest is out there so that's an interesting option too especially if formel fell to a price i would never mind owning a company like formel yeah very interesting they dropped about 10 11 percent on i think it was friday last week so <clears throat> Had a pretty tough earnings release, but uh, let us know what you guys think of the consumer stock industry. Is this value that we're seeing right now, uh, or is this time to stay away from the industry still because there's more pain to come? Let us know what you think and what stocks you're buying right in the comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And remember, you're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert, the hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats, over and out.